Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we have a review for you of Futuristic Racer Redout. Now this review has been written by longtime friend of the channel, Jace Glover. Thank you very much Jace for this. And without further ado, let's get into it. In a recent upcoming games video, you might recall Glenn, me, mentioning that Redout was supposed to be a launch title for the Nintendo Switch. More than two years later, we finally have the port that was promised. This high-speed racer was released on PC all the way back in 2016 and takes inspiration from classics such as F-Zero, Wipeout and Roll Cage. Can it possibly reach the lofty bar set by those titles? Well, thank you to Nicarlis for this review copy and now, let's find out. Okay, so just before we start the review, I just need to let you all know that Jace is absolutely shocking at this game. Now, that's his words, by the way, not mine. I'm not just having a pop at the geezer for no reason. But he just felt it important that you know this so that you set your expectations at an appropriate level when watching him crash time and again into the side of the track. Sounds like you need to buckle yourselves in. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Now it's not very often on Switch Up that we start with visuals, but I feel it is paramount to the experience in this particular title. Redout opts for a low poly aesthetic that looks okay in still frame, but this is a racing game and one that promises to be insanely fast. The first issue here that will turn many away is the locked 30 frames per second frame rate. The second and more pressing issue is what had to be done to maintain the sense of speed on the underpowered Switch. The developers first removed unnecessary background elements. This proves to make most of the levels feel quite bland and lifeless outside of the tracks themselves. The next and more egregious mistake is that the developers chose to use a variable resolution and the faster you get going into the game, the blurrier everything becomes as resolution is dropped to compensate. The result is a mess that hampers the experience and keeps this version of the game from reaching its full potential. There were some areas during particular tracks where I had no idea what was going on. These problems were made worse in handheld mode, where I found the game to be nearly unplayable. On a positive note, the performance is fantastic for what it is, and no matter how intense the races got, I never noticed any drops in frames. Unfortunately, this doesn't make up for the previous mentioned issues, and visuals score 9 out of 20. Redout provides a good variety of game modes. The big draw here for most people is going to be the career mode. Jumping into this, you are tasked with choosing your first racing team, of which there are seven. Each team has four cars to match the four racing classes, but essentially each step up in class is just an improved version of the base model. Each team also provides a unique balance of stats, with some building sturdy but slow racers, whilst others use fragile but fast ones and everything in between. Once you have chosen a team, you then pick the event that you want to race in. There is a surprisingly wide variety of event types, which provide new challenges at a steady pace and keep the game feeling fresh. Examples of these include your standard race of so many laps, a time trial where you aim to have the fastest single lap time, or a last man standing race where the last placed car is eliminated after each lap. The most unique of these is called a boss race, which sees sections of the multiple tracks strung together via teleporters. The events can also vary in regards to whether power-ups are allowed or not. Every race you run in career mode will award you money and experience, where the better you place, the more of each you will gain. Experience is necessary to boost your racer level so that you can move up to the next racing class, while money is needed to upgrade your vehicles or buy new ones. In addition to your standard winnings, you are also randomly granted the option to earn extra money via a contract. These typically require you to achieve a medal using a specific team's vehicle. One problem I have with the implementation of the contract system is that they can easily be cheesed. You do not have to complete a new event in order to satisfy the contract, nor are you restricted to a specific class of race, but instead you can simply repeat whatever event you find the easiest to win. Additionally, the balance of difficulty does not feel right and with experience being awarded no matter how well you do, the game does not necessarily prepare you for the higher class races. I breezed through class 1, getting a gold medal in every event with very little difficulty, even though my performance in each race was far from stellar. I figured I would meet the same level of difficulty when I bought into the class 2 races, but instead immediately started losing by 20 plus seconds. And when I say losing, I don't mean I was coming in second or third, I mean I was coming dead last. Hitting such a brick wall in terms of difficulty was frustrating, but forced me to try new cars and also to practice the tracks until I had them somewhat memorised. Practicing is easier with the game's quick race mode, 
where you can completely customize races by choosing the track, the event type, and how many AI opponents to include. The quick race mode is robust, but I feel it's nothing more really than a practice facility. As technical as the game is, you will likely need lots of practice to be successful. But there's one big rub here. The drive to practice and get better is directly tied to how fun the game is to play, and the Switch version has some major issues in this department. First, this version of Redout does not allow local multiplayer, as far as I could tell. Second, even though the game has been released for a few days now, the online rooms were completely dead and I couldn't find a single race. And finally, but most importantly, is the fact that gameplay in every mode is hampered by the visual issues mentioned previously. Gameplay can be fun at times, but equally frustrating at others due to the aforementioned issues. And as such, gameplay receives 12 out of 20. In terms of controls, the game functions similarly to most racers. Default settings use the ZR and ZL triggers to accelerate and brake respectively. The left stick controls your left and right steering, while the right stick controls both left and right strafing as well as your vertical pitch. The X button switches between different camera angles whilst A looks behind your vehicle. Your vehicle can also save up energy and release it for a burst of speed with either the L or B button. Finally, a press of the R or the Y button will trigger an active power-up if you have one equipped. The game does not allow you to fully customise the controls, but there are two other layouts to choose from including a classic mode where the face buttons control acceleration and braking while the triggers control strafe, similar to Mario Kart. Being that I typically play kart races, I thought the classic control scheme worked best for me, but found myself constantly confused about which strafe button I needed to press to whip around turns properly. In the end, I found far more success with the default layout. All in all though, the controls are solid and very responsive, and they receive 16 out of 20. The audio in Redout is hands down my favourite part of the game. The soundtrack is upbeat and got me pumped up heading into each race. I feel like every track fits the theme nicely, and my only complaint here is that there were not more songs in general. Likewise, the sound effects do a good job of adding to the feel of being in a crazy, fast, futuristic racing world. HD rumble is used to fantastic effect, and you will feel every crash and grind against the wall. Audio is a clear standout for the title, and it receives 17 out of 20. Redout for the Nintendo Switch costs £35.99, or $39.99. For this price, you are getting a solid amount of content as all previous DLC is included. There are a ton of tracks, plenty to unlock in career mode, different cars that completely change the way you have to approach an event, and a plethora of ways to race. However, even with all that said, it is hard to recommend this game given the issues with graphical fidelity. I do not see this game maintaining a healthy online community, and with no other multiplayer options, there is just not enough here to keep you coming back. If you are interested in this game and have the option to, pick it up on Steam as I imagine it will be a vastly superior experience. With this being said, value scores 12 out of 20. To conclude, the wait was long but unfortunately it didn't pay off. While fun at times and featuring a great soundtrack, extremely blurry visuals, especially while in handheld and a lack of multiplayer options, keep an otherwise promising game from being a standout title on the Switch. Redout receives a Switch Up score of 66%. So there you have it, another futuristic racer on the Switch seemingly disappoints to some extent after the Xenon Racer debacle and it looks as if Fast RMX is still the way to go on the Switch so far. Anyway, many thanks to Jace for a cracking review, please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just heard, consider subscribing for all things Switch all the time, a quick thanks to our Patreons for your continued support and as always each and every one of you for watching our videos, we really do appreciate it. Take it easy and until the next one. Happy gaming.